Hi everyone, this is JP LaForest from Studio JPEG, and in this video I will be discussing the Canon lens nomenclature. So when you look at a Canon lens, there's a lot of abbreviations and letters and numbers, and it can be quite confusing when you start off. So I'll be going over all the possibilities and explain to you what each one does and why each one is important or what its purpose is or its reason of existence. And I'll give you an example here. This is the basic kit lens that comes with all the Rebel series. It's the Canon zoom lens EFS 18 to 55 millimeters f 3.5 to 5.6 IS. It's made by Canon Inc. and it has a filter tread size of 58 millimeters. So if you're not sure what any of those mean, this is the right video for you. So I made the following table that I'll put a link down below that you can download at the Studio JPEG website. And I divided the lens abbreviations in different categories. So first of all is the mount, the focal length, the aperture, the focusing motor, and then the miscellaneous abbreviations. So the first one is the mount. And the mount is going to decide if your lens is going to fit on your camera. So basically it's the specification of the back part here and the mechanism to screw it on. And in the table here I included the older mounts that are discontinued, which are, which are the R, F, L, and F, D. Uh, those today are not really important for most people, but I put them there, here just for completeness sake. So the modern... Mounts types are, there's the EF electrofocus and the EFS electrofocus small image circle. So the EF, uh, you can notice the lenses and the camera has a red dot and the EFS is a white square. And the EF mount is Basically, all the modern Canon cameras on the market today have at least the EF mount. And the smaller Rebel cameras have the EFS mount. I'll post another video where I explain which camera falls into which category. So if you're not sure which mount your camera has, you can check out the link that I'll post somewhere around here. And... Next is the EFM mount, which is the Electrofocus mirrorless, and that's for the new mirrorless camera that Canon is introducing soon. And that lens is going to be smaller and weight less and cost a bit less, but still have some great quality of image in it. And finally, I put them here, although the TSE or tilt shift electrofocus lenses. They use the standard EF mounts, but camera calls them a TSE. And basically when you have a lens such as this one, there's actually multiple layers of glass inside of it, which is gonna decide how your image ends up at the end. With the tilt shift lenses, you can control the glass inside of the lens and you can either raise it up, down, left, right or tilt it in diagonal in all sorts of directions. It's a more advanced, more professional series of lenses but uh, they can give some very great artistic results and also for building photography that you can really straighten straighten out your image perfectly with that. So I put it here because Canon identifies them with the TSE instead of EF. Alright, the next part is the focal length. 
there's two types of lenses, the prime and the zoom lenses. I'll start with the zoom lenses, which is what most people are probably used to nowadays, especially thanks to the little point and shoot cameras. And basically it's a lens like this that you can zoom in and out as needed. Whereas the prime lenses as the one I'm using currently to film this uh, is a, in my case, it's a 50 millimeter lens. And that one does not zoom in, it does not zoom out. So it only, it always stays at 50 millimeters. So if I want to zoom in or out, I have to zoom with my feet, as we say. The next part is the aperture. And basically the aperture is how much light that the lens lets in. So it's how wide that it's going to open up or you can also close it down if there's too much light. And this only shows the maximum aperture that you can reach. And for aperture, I'll probably do a video soon on how aperture works if you're not familiar with it. But uh, basically, the smaller the aperture number, the more light it lets in. So the uh, lens I'm using right now is the 50 millimeter f 1.8 and the f slash is just the abbreviation for aperture and basically between the 1.8 there and this one is a 3.5 to 5.6 so the 1.8 actually lets in more light and this one as I said it's 3.5 to 5.6 which basically means if I zoom out, so at the widest angle possible, I'm going to have an aperture of 3.5. But if I zoom in, then I'm going to have an aperture of 5.6. And again, that's the maximum. Uh, you can put them uh, with a smaller aperture, for example, f8, 11, and all the way to 22. And some lenses can go even higher but they only put the largest aperture you can get. Next is the focusing motor. Uh, some lenses will have no mention of the motor. For example, this lens. So this is the standard autofocus that Canon developed a long time ago. Then you have the more elaborate focusing motors like the USM or ultrasonic motor, which goes fast enough that you can barely not hear it anymore. So it goes in the ultrasonic frequencies. And then you have the stepping motor, which is a new series of lenses that Canon introduced with the Rebel T4i. And these offer smoother focusing not quite as fast as the USM from the initial tests I've seen, but it's still a new lens type. So, you know, there's not a lot of tests that have been done on those ones yet, but it's much smoother so you can autofocus during videos. And finally, the miscellaneous section. So you have the image stabilizer where for example, this lens does come with it. And basically there's a motor that controls a lens element and tries to compensate for any vibration. So if you're holding the camera and you're going like this, well, it still wouldn't <laughs> compensate that much, but I'm just exaggerating it. But, you know, the motor would try to compensate for any movement and try to keep your image steady. And it works great for both video and for photography also. And then you have the DO, which I believe they only made one DO lens so far, which is diffractive optics. And basically, it's a very specialized glass that they put in the lens. And it... Uh, makes the lens smaller and less heavy so it's really great but again it's only the 70 to 300 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6 deal 
ISUSM lens that has it. Then you have the luxury lenses, which you can notice by the red ring around the lens. And sometimes they come with a white lens body. And the uh, luxury lenses are the highest quality lenses from Canon. They tend to offer better image quality, better weather sealing, and a better, more solid build. And they tend to be more expensive and heavier as uh, on the downside. Then you have the fisheye lens, which is super ultra wide to the point where it distorts the image and makes everything look like a bubble, kind of like if you're looking through a bug's eye or something like that. Then you have the macro lenses, which lets you focus super close to your subject. So if you're taking pictures of bugs, flowers, jewelry, or anything that you want to show the fine detail, the macro lenses are great for that. And finally, you have the compact macro lenses. And that's basically a macro lens that is much smaller, less heavier, and less expensive, I believe, than the other macro lenses. But you can't get quite as close to your subject with the compact macro. But it's still a great lens for macro photography. So the final part that's left to discuss is the filter tread size. And basically you can buy various filters to modify the way the light goes into your lens and then to your camera that you can screw in the front of your lens. And for example, this one is a 58 millimeter. So you need the 58 millimeter filters. And you can buy some adapters to step up or to step down between different filter sizes. So if your lenses all take different sizes, you can still get away. You buy the largest filter size that you need, and then you put you buy the step down lenses for each one of them. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it very instructional. And as a homework, if you'd like to practice, I included examples of all the different lens types so you can practice with. So you can look at uh, lens and make sure that you understand everything. At first, it's a little bit intimidating, but as you practice, it's going to become just second nature to you. And after a while, you can grab any lens made by Canon and understand what they mean. I will be making videos also for Tamron and Sigma lenses because they have their own terminology and their own abbreviations. Unfortunately, you have to learn the nomenclature for each type of lens that you intend to be using. So thank you once again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button up there. And I'll see you next time. Bye!